Oi. I need some ID, love. Um, are you serious? Who boy, it's Hell Boy. A new one that looks strikingly similar to the old one, but is new. Is new. And it doesn't matter because Hellboy's here. And he has to stop an evil witch and himself, kind of, from taking over all of humanity. So I have a bit of a personal history of Hellboy. Or more specifically, the Guillermo del Toro, Ron Perlman films. I haven't read too much of the comic, but I do plan to in the near future. But I do really enjoy the other films. While the writing's not always the best, they have such a passion put into them, from their directing, to their acting, to their production design, to their makeup, to their visual effects. There's a lot of fun to be had in these, especially the second one, which is a marked improvement from the first. Dr. Manning, suck my ectoplasmic schwanstocher! Despite the usually okay commercial performance of the films, Del Toro, along with lead actor Ron Perlman and Hellboy creator Mike Magnolia, have been dead set on making a third for a while now. Del Toro even held a Twitter poll to get Hellboy 3 made, and that was just two years ago. But alas, nothing came of it. Studios just weren't interested in continuing Del Toro's story, but they weren't completely uninterested in Hellboy in general, so a reboot was inevitably in order. And at first, the news didn't seem so bad. Mike Magnolia was involved in it to some capacity. It was going to be R-rated with a darker tone different from Del Toro's work. You've got the director of The Descent on board. And even though it's a damn shame we'll never get to see Perlman play the role he was born for again, oh. David Harbour is not a bad replacement. He's a good actor, he has a similar kind of voice, he looked the part. This could be something kind of interesting. And then the trailer came out. Sorry! My bad. <laughs> uh... Maybe that trailer intentionally showed all the worst parts of the movie just to get us excited for the actual good parts. We're just gonna have to wait for the actual movie to come out in order to prove- Ooh. Well, sure it may have a far lower Rotten Tomato score than the previous two, as well as rampant production problems from what I hear. But it could still turn out watchable, right? That was pretty much the mindset I had until the movie started. And I can't really remember the last time where, right from the get-go, my mood turned completely into... This is gonna be rough. Where it opens on the flashback to the Middle Ages, and you hear a narrator going, A long time ago, back in the Middle Fucking Ages. I seriously felt like I was watching Your Highness. That whole opening was meant to introduce the character of the Blood Queen, who's played by Milia Jokovic, who only picks the best roles to appear in. And it's like her fighting against King Arthur and his men, which why is Hollywood so obsessed with King Arthur lately? But what distracted me even more is that that whole beginning sequence was shot and edited like a trailer. Every line in that scene was expository, they used all these random fast motion edits, none of the cuts had any rhyme or reason to them. And then when that scene's over, the title Hellboy comes up, and I was like, well, that was a first impression. And speaking of, we're introduced to Hellboy in the most random way. The next scene after the opening takes place in Mexico City, where Hellboy's on the phone with his dad and he has to stop one of his former field operatives from turning into a vampire in a wrestling ring. I'd like to stress that I am judging this as a reboot, cause see, how a reboot's supposed to work is that you introduce something to a new generation of people who have not seen the original movies or might have not even heard of the comic. So if you want to introduce a character, you should try to introduce them. Cause it kind of feels like you're making this with the mindset that you have seen the other films. So you already know who Hellboy is, we don't need this shit. Let's look back at how the original introduced him. We open on his origin story that tells us how he came to Earth. And then we don't see him for the next 10 minutes, in which that time is spent on world building or character details. By the time we're finally introduced to him, is also the same time that this one character is introduced to him as well. I hate those comic books. They never get the eyes right. Hellboy. That film took time to build up its introduction to Hellboy, while this film is just bloop, here you go. It could be that they wanted to avoid retelling the origin story again, but the film does retell his origin story again, but in a way that's even worse. 
it was at a part that was about 20 minutes into the movie where Hellboy teams up with a pack of hunters, which that subplot went nowhere. And he comes across this one lady who's all like, I was there the day you were born. Look into this orb and I'll tell you. And we're just given his origin story again. Which, why now? Why like this? Was there literally no better way to explain a bunch of Nazis tried to open a portal to hell, but he came out instead? I feel like this would be so confusing to someone who hasn't heard of Hellboy before. Anyway, I'm not going to spend this whole review going point by point each scene of this film, because in all honesty, it's just a dull, unstructured mess. Like he teams up with these two sidekicks who are just boring. We see the Blood Queen and her hog sidekick just doing stuff. There are these sisters who are here for some reason. The Baba Yaga appears for some reason. Hellboy's dad is here. Which, how old is he? Because Nazi Germany was like a longer time ago now than it was in 2004. Hellboy rips a villain's head off and literally quotes the line from the Inspector Gadget movie. Should have quit while you were ahead. I remembered when this was announced. They really sold the fact that this is going to be a dark, serious, edgy, R-rated Hellboy. Which, alright, the comic was kind of like that too. So why is there so much bad humor in it? Oh There's this one part where they start copying Hellboy 2. It's when a character gets struck by something deadly, so they have to go find a mysterious creature to remove it for them. But instead of getting an amazing creature design like the Angel of Death, we get a haggard, undead Merlin the Magician. Hmm. There are things in it I could give some credit to. Like, David Harbour is trying. It really didn't feel like he was sleepwalking through this performance. I feel he could have been a good Hellboy had he have gotten a better script or a better director because he kind of says all his lines in the same tone. Some dads get their kids Legos. It smashes things real good. Who you call a monster, pal? You look in the mirror recently? He's an asshole. Whenever there is gore or creature violence, it actually is kind of fun to watch. I'll give him some credit for trying to throw in some practical effects, even though a lot of it isn't very noticeable. The CG can range from being whatever to really freaking bad. There was a part where the Blood Queen's eyeball was hanging out, and it reminded me of a scene from Spawn. Hello, Diane. Remember me? <laughs> If I could compare this movie to another one that I shared similar feelings towards, it would be Pacific Rim Uprising. Both are somewhat related to works by Del Toro. Both were released by different studios in the prior films. Both had an entirely different crew from the prior films. And both lacked the passion and vision from the prior films. They're also both bad films, but if I had to pick between the two, I'd say Hellboy might be worse. But Uprising was more boring. I don't know, I guess what I'm saying is, don't watch either of these. This could have had some sort of potential behind it, but... We do, but this is not gonna work, you know, cause I'm a Capricorn and you're fucking nuts! It's wasted. <sighs> so long, number three. You were nice when you were promised. And might as well not pay your number to waste. Three out of ten. Three is a magic number. Yes, it is. It's a magic number. Somewhere in the ancient mystic trinity, you get three as a magic number.